Hello and welcome to Color Arts YouTube channel. I'm Gisette Trunnell. Today our goal is to create a one-of-a-kind work of art using Twinkling H2Os and stamps. The inspiration for this project was the vintage floral cards of years gone by. Join me as we began to explore the properties and wonder of Twinkling H2Os. First step is to create a background. Here I am going to be using the Twinkling H2Os as a traditional watercolor, adding water and applying it to the surface. First, I am creating an area of foliage and then we'll fill in the remainder with the blue for the background. Next step is to stamp the image. Any image will work. The next step is to begin roughing in the foliage. I'm going to start with the darkest of the green and fill in the painted leaves and stems. Towards the middle of the image, I'll be using a lighter color. Now that that is accomplished, we need to fill in the background. This is where the artistic part comes in. As you can see, I'm looking for the areas of the background that's a little bit darker and creating stems and foliage that will later be filled in with flowers. All right, now we are ready to start painting the flowers and the butterflies. For the most part, I will be using Twinkling H2O straight out of the pot. Now and again, I will put it on my craft sheet and add water to get the consistency that I need for, the, for that particular application. But throughout this process, you will note that I am continuously stirring the pots. It is important to stir to activate and evenly distribute the mica throughout the product. This product is very simple to use if you remember two things. Activate with water prior to use, at least five minutes, and stir. As I start to paint the flowers, you will note that I begin with a light color, and then a medium of the same family, and then finally a dark. This allows me to create light and shadow. I will do it for the orange, and then I will go back with the yellow. If you watch close, I kind of flip around the page as my eye catches something that needs a minor adjustment. The art of painting these is not to get too caught up in the detail. We're after an impression. Flowers from a distance do not have distinct and individual parts. They simply have the impression of color and shape. 
That's all we're creating, the impression of color and shape. The butterflies are the next step in this process. Simply color them in using a color of your choice. Don't worry about adding in all the details. Just lay down the color and we'll add the details in during the next step. We're on the final step of the actual painting. Here we're going to add a bit more detail to the flowers and darken up the centers to create more depth. Then we'll move on to the inking and we'll be done. finally have all of our painting done and now we sit down to the fun part. Here we'll be using ink. I'm going to be using a multi-liner Copic 0.25 millimeter and I will be roughly sketching and adding detail to the painted areas. In some areas the stamped image still remains so I can use that as a guideline. In other areas, the image has completely been obliterated, which is fine. I'm just going to use the painted area and loosely sketch around creating the illusion of an inked picture. If you look close, it's very, very sketchy. Additionally, the mica clogs the pen, so the pen itself doesn't flow smoothly. In this case, this works to an advantage. It adds to the sketchiness. But every now and again, I have to stop and rub it off onto a piece of paper to clear it and then start again. When I do start again, I'm very careful that I'm using a very light hand so that I don't end up with what appears like tracing. All right, we're down to the wire. So we just need to finish it up. Here I'm going to use some Distress inks to darken and blend out the image. Remember, I'm going for a vintage feel. So I'm using three colors of Distress that match my painting, but also will darken and deepen and add some edging. Lastly, I'll be adding photo vintage photo around the edge and that just sort of frames it all in.
Here I use fun foam. Because watercolor paper, especially with the amount of water that's been added, tends to ripple. Getting a good adherence to your card base can sometimes be a bit tricky. The fun foam and score tape seems to solve this issue. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Also, remember to subscribe to Color Arts YouTube channel so that you can be notified when there's new material posted. All the supplies and links are listed below in the description. Thank you again and happy crafting.